Hello everybody, good Tuesday afternoon. Come on in, it's time to make some fresh chicken salad. I've got a rotisserie chicken here from none other than Sam's Club. I already start pulling the skin off. So what I do first here, this, this is a three pound chicken I believe it is. Go ahead and get that skin off because I don't use that in a salad. Once you get that chicken skin off of there, you're ready to start chopping it, which is a very super easy process. And i tell you what, this rotisserie chicken makes the best chicken salad that you will ever put your mouth on. So we're going to make us some good old homemade chicken salad. That's what we're going to have for dinner today. And hopefully there'll be some left for tomorrow. At the same time, I'm also putting together a little bit of salsa because I'm out of salsa. Y'all believe I'm almost out of salsa? So I got to do some salsa today. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, um, this is so easy to do. So, so, so easy to do. Like I say, you got to get it. Just start chopping, chop, chop, chopping to it. There's no special way, whatever way. Because when I get it into the uh, bowl there, I'm going to take my fork and chop it up some more. So that's good enough for right now. It's sort of like mine, chunky, but not too chunky. I just start pulling this breast away. It's not rocket science, y'all. And it is no long, drawn-out special way to do it. You just start chop, chop, chopping it. You can put it on a cutting board and chop it if you like. Whatever you prefer to do. This is how I prefer to do mine because I can do it so fast like this. There's a lot of meat on that breast, too, so this makes a good... By the time I get everything, the mayo, and get my veggies chopped and put in here, honey, I got four pounds of unadulterated, pure, elegance, excellence, heavenly hash, whatever you want to call it. But just, you know, and you can use these bones and skin if you want to boil them off and make you a little pot of uh, cream of chicken soup or some... It makes nice chicken broth or whatever. You know, just throw something in there and make you some broccoli soup. I think I might do some broccoli soup since I heard myself say it. And if I do, I'll show y'all how to do it. Just real simple. But just continue to cut this chicken up. Um, it's going to turn into chicken salad, y'all. So I hope you all uh, had a pleasant day so far. I have. I've had a very busy day early this morning. Well, not so early, but. 9.30, I went down to the school today. It's Tuesday. Y'all know what Tuesday is. I work with my girls on Tuesday at the high school. Had my session with them, checking their grades and their progress and seeing where they are. Because uh, one of my girls is a senior, and I just need to talk to guidance and find out where she is. And my 11th grade girls, of course, I need to find out, you know, what's going on before the end of the year. So if they need to do some makeup testing, makeup work, or whatever, they have time to do that. So... You know, when you're working with young folk, you can't always take them at face value because their way of understanding and explaining what's going on with them is two totally different things. And I knew this from experience. And, you know, it's, it's one thing when you listen to a child or anybody when you're checking up on them because usually checking up means there is bound to be or apt to be maybe something that not that's not so pleasant may come out of that checkup so in checking up we're not necessarily that it was so unpleasant but it was just some things that were misunderstood that need to be corrected and i'm glad i did it at this point so that we can uh, use this time wisely okay that chicken is coming off nicely that piece of skin there Whew, you know y'all know i'm gonna eat by half this skin y'all already know that right okay but anyway back to my kids you know you have to listen carefully when they're telling you things, especially if it's something that, you know, well, how are you doing here? Well, I don't know, and maybe this, and I don't understand that, so I thought, okay. And let me tell you something. When you're dealing with kids, especially teenagers, you have to be honest and upfront. So as they're telling me what's going on with them, and I'm jotting my little notes down, then when I let them finish with their little dialogue, then I have mine. And one thing I always say when I'm going before somebody on behalf of someone else, I always say to them, now listen, I've heard what you said. I've got to go to another person with this information. So what I need to know is, have you told me everything? Okay. And then 
do a good little mini assessment. And based on what you said, it seems like uh, you got some issues with maybe getting work in on time or getting to class on time or getting to class period, you know, maybe this, that, and the other. And then my next thing is, okay, I'm going to present, and I'll bring get me a question out of that whole scenario. I'm going to present to this individual what you have told me, and this is what I'm going to say to them so that they know that when I go to that individual and get the feedback from them, if that individual refutes anything that they say, then I got word for word what you told me and word for word on what that individual said back to me in response to your information. So um, so I tell them, you know, if you feel comfortable with me, because that's the only way I know how to present a thing. I'm not going uh, shuffling and trying to make up stuff. So if you want me to go on your behalf, this is the way I do best with getting the best information. So make sure you're honest and upfront with people when you do, especially children, because if you lose their um, respect or that confidence, you forget it. You, you just shut them down, and they're not going to trust you to say or do anything else on their behalf. So even with all that, honey, sometimes you can get some uh, eye openers and some surprises, because I sure got me... A few eyefuls this morning, a few earfuls, and but that was fine though because what it put me was in a position to help that individual. So if I'm going on your behalf, then the ultimate question is based on. Hold on one second, let me rip some hands off, y'all. So my ultimate question, like I say, is what can you do? Because you know you're basically. You're the instructor, you're the, you're the person in charge, you're the boss, you're the whatever. What can we do to get this person on track based on what you require out of your class on this job or whatever? What can we do? What do you see that we can do to get this individual on track? Because clearly sometimes there is a um, maybe a, a breakdown in communication. The right people may not be involved. So clearly if there's an issue, we need to get it straightened up because... The ultimate goal is to help that person to move forward, get past some things, and especially children. We want them to be able to move forward, get to the next uh, level, so that they can move on with their life. So that's my ultimate question when I'm dealing with uh, going on behalf of someone. What can we do to help make this child's life better, to get those grades up? Will you accept this, that, and the third? And also, the other thing that I did... Uh, as I said, to, I always say to my students now, when I go forward and that teacher tells me, you need to make up a test, you need to write a paper, and they come back at me and say, well, if she writes this paper or this or that, or, or you know, do a little presentation, I ask the student, are you willing to do a paper if you have to do a paper? Are you willing to make a presentation? And if you tell me yes, then that's what I expect for you to do so I can go forth um, with trying to help you. So, that was just some, just just a little sidebar into what we were, what I was doing with my morning. So usually I do one hour and a half. Today I spent three hours, and I, well three hours taking care of things. So when you're dealing with children, make sure that you're willing and ready to go the full gambit with them. Follow through and follow up. Uh, and sometimes things, you know, when you talk things out with especially children, they are not always as bad as they may seem. So that's what I'm, I've been doing some this afternoon. So I've been following up on those sessions with, with three of my girls, follow, trying to follow up on that so that I can see a clear path. Because it is my greatest desire in the world to see especially young people especially young people, to see them do well and move forward. And if I can do anything within reason uh, that don't break the law or whatever, I'm going to do my very best to help. So that's what I've been spending my day doing. Went to the Arts Council. Of course, went to Sam's Club to get this chicken. So now I'm back at home, and I'm in front of the camera or behind the camera, on the side of the camera, to do the chicken salad. So let's move on with this chicken salad. I know y'all thinking, why don't you get this chicken salad done? I hear you. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just finish chopping up the rest of that uh, little bit of chicken. And I've got some uh, bell pepper, celery, and onion over right there that I've got to get chopped. So I'm going to put it in my little Nutribullet and get it chopped up, and I shall return.
Okay, we're back, y'all. Ready to start mixing our uh, chicken salad. As you can see, I've got it in nice large chunks, as I told you. And I'm just going to take the spoon, just chunk through it just like that to sort of, you know, break it down a little bit more. Okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm doing better with my portion. So what I'm going to start with is uh, a couple of... Uh, so you're going to do... One, that's a three-fourths of a cup. So we're going to start out with a cup and a half of mayo, okay? Put that right over there. And what I'm going to do basically is, is put everything right in here. I'm going to get everything into the bowl, and then I'll begin mixing. So that's a cup and a half of Hellman's mayo, okay? And next, over here, I've chopped my celery and green pepper. That's about a... It's about a cup of celery and green pepper, which is maybe a uh, half of a medium uh, green pepper and about three or four stalks of celery. That should do it. Just gives it that extra, extra flavor in there. So there's that. Next, I don't do onion. Now, you do onion if you like. I don't do onion because the onion takes on a strong flavor after a couple of days if you have leftovers. And we're going to start out with... Um, that is turmeric. There again, that's optional. I like turmeric. And we're going to start out with uh, about a fourth of a cup of brown sugar. Y'all know I love my brown sugar. Well, let's just go ahead and do it. I, I'm, I pretty much know. That's a little lump in there. I don't want that lump in there. Not quite a half a cup. Now, if you like your sweeter, you can put more. If you don't want it sweet at all, don't put any. Okay, and we're going to do a, uh, about a teaspoon of black pepper. Okay, nice teaspoon of black pepper. And I've got some little old Vlasic sweet relish. I don't do a lot of relish, but just a little because it is a salad. About a tablespoon of that. That's all I put in that big old pan, about a good tablespoon of uh, pickle relish. Because it is chicken salad. A little bit of relish in there. Okay. Basically, all of my ingredients are in there. I got my bell pepper or green pepper chopped and celery chopped. Got my mayo, my black pepper, my uh, sweet relish, a little bit of uh, turmeric. There's no need for salt with this because that, remember, this is a rotisserie chicken and it's already salted and seasoned. I'm not going to even put any uh, complete seasoning in that. Maybe if I can keep myself from it. Um, okay, let's just go ahead and, and, and as you can see, this is a very simple, simple way to make chicken salad, and it is not time consuming. You saw it only took about eight or ten minutes to chop up that chicken, and basically it's done because once you get the chicken chopped, the, the salad is done. Now, some people put raisins in there, some put grapes in there. If you want to make uh, lady dye, you put uh grapes or raisins in there this is this chicken salad is done y'all as soon as i figure out if, it, if all the taste is there remember i told you before you put that food out for consumption make sure that it's seasoned well so all i need to do here is just continue to mix everything together we're on 13 minutes and 56 seconds right now y'all so we're going to say a good 15 minutes to make this chicken salad start to finish and you can be sitting down to the table with some crackers put it on a bun put make hoagies make uh just some of that good old artisan bread toast it up put it on there and just take the back of your spoon this is to blend everything and you got your nice bowl of chunky chicken salad and if you want to cut onions and put in there that's the chef's choice okay so there it is, y'all. Peggy's homemade chunky chicken salad. I just didn't make the chicken. I went and bought it from Sam's Club. But, you know, if you want to boil your chicken, do the same thing. Same process. So, there's the chicken salad. I'm going to get a bowl to put it in, and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all. I did go back and put another half cup of uh, mayo because it was not as loose as I wanted because I like to be able to spread it easily. And I'm also going to put me a teaspoon of complete seasoning because I want to know what complete seasoning will taste like. I don't think 
but I put it in my chicken salad before, but I want to know what it tastes like. So, it's your choice, but there again, it's your choice. You can't put a lot because it's, it has a salt content, not salty, salty, but you don't want to me uh, mess up your blend. Other than that, this chicken salad is ready, y'all. So, remember, there's two cups of uh, mayo in there now because I went back and put another half cup, okay? And I also put a teaspoon of complete seasoning. And I'm sure it's probably taking it to another level, y'all. So, let's go in there. And look, so y'all don't worry about it. This spoon, this is how I do it. And then I eat it. I don't eat it off spoon and stick to spoon, but I don't do that. Just so you know. Okay. Yeah, put the complete seasoning in there. One teaspoon takes it to that next level. Okay. Chicken salad, y'all, is done. Mm. What I like to do is let mine chill a little bit. So I'm going to get it in a bowl and it's going in the fridge. Okay, there it is, y'all. Chicken salad for your life. Best chicken salad you're going to ever eat. Follow the instructions. And if you have the rotisserie chicken from Sam's Club or from whenever, and 20 minutes you can have this on your table so go ahead run in the kitchen see what you already got in there if not run out to the store grab you some also if you're near food line i use the rich and crisp crackers you can use rich crackers you can use townhouse crackers you can use saltine whatever your little heart desires just go ahead and get it done y'all so y'all can tell me about it because this is uh, probably the best chicken salad that you'll ever taste so listen y'all thank y'all for tuning in with me Love you guys. Hope you're having a God bless Tuesday afternoon. And thank you all for tuning in and praying with me daily. I feel y'all all day long. So the ones of you who pray, uh, keep it going. Because we have to keep those prayers going up so that the blessings will continue to come down. So until I cook again, love you guys. Toodaloo.